Have you ever wanted to perform complex interactions with your ontology? Functions in Foundry enables code authors to write logic that can be executed quickly in operational contexts. So that's places such as dashboards or other applications designed to empower decision-making workflows. Most notably, Functions includes first-class support for authoring logic based off the Foundry ontology. So that includes support for things like reading properties of various object types, traversing the links between objects, and flexibly making ontology edits. Now we're going to cover all of that and more throughout this series, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with your first Functions repository. I also suggest that you take a look at the official Foundry documentation, which is linked in the description below. And with that, let's get started. Let's create a new Functions repository. On this screen, we can give it a name like First Functions Repository. Functions are written in TypeScript, which enables us to use types to infer functionality and generate object set service queries more effectively. But we'll cover that more in the future. When your repository is first initialized, it will have a source directory containing an index.ts file. In there, you'll find a few commented out functions, one of which is called my function. And all that does is simply add one to the integer provided to it. So let's go ahead and uncomment this function, and then also uncomment the import it relies on. Let's also uncomment the associated unit test. Now that the code is uncommented, Code Assist will pick it up. So we can see it in the live preview tab of the functions helper. There, we can give it some test inputs and see what the output would be. Let's go ahead and commit these code changes. If we now go to the checks tab, we can see that one check is currently running. Checks are kicked off for every commit and will validate the state of your repository. If you choose to write unit tests, it will run those as well. Once the check is successful, if we click on the code tab again and then open the functions helper, we can see that the publish tab is empty, but my function is available in the live preview. So let's walk through how to publish a new version of our repository. We can do so by cutting a tag with a new version number. If we now go to branches and then to tags, we can see that checks for this new tag have been kicked off. After the checks run, we can see that my function is in the publish tab with version number 1.0. So now any Foundry application with permissions to view this repository can execute this function. Now let's add a new function to this repository and publish it. To do so, we can create a new branch. And then let's add some code to the My Functions class. Let's say you want to create a function that produces a range of integers separated by a step size. After you've added the new function, you can run it immediately in the functions helper using the live preview feature. To make our new function available for use, we need to publish it. So. To do that, we can commit our code, and then we can open a pull request to merge our branch into master. I've set this PR to close and delete my branch once checks pass. Finally, we can update master with the code changes and then tag a new version off the master branch. This time we can use a tag like 2.0. 
We can view the progress of our publish. And now if we go back to code and check the publish tab, we can see that both our functions are published with version 2.0. The range function will only have 2.0, but my function will have both versions 1.0 and 2.0 since we previously published. All applications you use in Foundry uh, with access to this repository can choose between which version they'd like to use. Congratulations, you've now created your first TypeScript functions repository.